Come on, let's give Jesus a good hand. Can we do that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. I don't use the table. Where's the other thing? Oh, thanks. All right, sit down. <laughs> sit down. Thanks, buddy boy. Oh, you're strong, aren't you? Could you press that? Oh, you could. Uh, you can do it. Hallelujah. Thanks, Dan. Also, our Bible study this Tuesday. We're not going to have our Bible study this Tuesday. We will start again the following Tuesday because many of us that are in the class have some things we uh, are going to be doing together. Is that correct? And also that we didn't get a chance to mention it, but uh, we're going to be giving away how many bikes? We're going to give away 70 bikes to the children that live over in the projects. So they're going to have a brand new bicycle and they're going to have a helmet they can wear when they're riding those bicycles. And they're all going to receive, they have a list of them, they're all going to receive Nike sneakers. Come on, let's do, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. So that's a, that's a great thing that's getting ready to happen, and we're going to put some smiles on some faces. And we have moms that are over there that are having a difficult time making it and maybe will not be able to have a Christmas for their children, but they will have a Christmas this year. At least they'll have a brand-new bike and some Nike uh, sneakers. Uh, when I was a kid growing up, Converse were the sneakers to wear. Do you remember that? If your if your sneakers slip and slide, buy Converse, the ones with the star on the side. <laughs> now it's Nike, Adidas, New Balance, all those kind of things. Hallelujah! I, I want to title this message. I didn't see that coming. Anybody ever have anything happen in your life and you just didn't see it coming? Okay, if we got together, we could have quite a session of talking about those things that have happened in our lives that we just didn't see it coming. And so that's kind of the title of my message. I actually haven't preached in a while, so I have a, 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 a subtitle. <laughs> I got to get two into one here. And my subtitle is, my subtitle <laughs> is wounded warriors, wounded warriors. But we'll just stick with, I didn't see that coming. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and uh, he'll put it up there on the screen for you. Uh, and we're going to read verses 8 and 9. The end of a thing is better than the beginning. Turn to somebody and tell them the best is yet to come. Tell them that. Tell them things are going to get better and better and better and better for you. Tell, I mean, tell them like you mean it. Point your finger at them. I know you're not supposed to point your finger. Look at them right in the face and tell them things are going to get better for you. The end of a thing is better than... The end of a thing is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit... Now, here's the, been the challenge of my life. Hallelujah. I, I, I've thought about going down and maybe uh, picketing uh, City Hall, because, uh, but I'm not going to do it because it was just delayed another six months. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Notice what it says, the proud in spirit. Now, I, I don't know about you. I, I, at times in my life, I have thought that I was a self-made man. What an idiot. <laughs> Self-reliant. I was the man. I was, you know, whatever. Only to find out that there's only one who is the man, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on Amen. and give him some praise with me. The proud in spirit, do not hasten in your spirit to be angry. 
The proud in spirit get angry. They become frustrated. Now, have I ever grown frustrated with the Lord? Yes. It's like, God, can't you just do this my way? I mean, come on. Let's do it. Yeah, and do it right now. Let's not wait a week or a month or six months or three years or five years. You put this thing on my heart, and I've been praying to you, and I've given it all that I can give to it, and it's still not happening, and I'm praying. And you know what? God does things his way. His ways are not our ways. And I have grown in my life at times frustrated with God. I don't want to say angry. Well, kind of, sort of, maybe. I read a book years ago, and I've mentioned this before. It was a little Italian lady who wrote a book, and the title of the book is, Hey, God, what's the matter for you? I don't know how many times I've said that to the Lord. Lord, hey, hey, this needs to happen right now. And and let let me just tell you, do A, B, C, and D, and and that'll be fine. And God doesn't do A, B, C, and D. He does it the way he wants to do it. And he does it when he wants to do it. And there's something inside of me that I've said, hey, God, what's the matter for you? But it comes from pride. Pride. We think we know better. We think that we can actually dictate to God what he's going to do and when he's going to do it. And let me tell you something. If that is your approach to doing godly things, you are going to be one frustrated, angry individual. For anger rests in the bosom of a fool. Don't play the part of the fool. Keeping that in mind, Philippians chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 6. Being confident, everybody say confident. confident. You know, a comp- to be confident, like, yo, I know, yo, hey. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something about this this walk of faith in your life. God started it. It was God that did it. Tucker's back there and saying, come on, pastor. You know why he's saying, come on, pastor? Because I know where Tucker came from. He's sitting in jail over in, was it Arcadia? And was it the probation officer? The probation officer, they wanted to send him to prison, I guess, or jail or wherever. And a probation officer decided that she was going to send him over here to Harvest to go to Harvest House. And when he got to Harvest House, there was a transformation that took place into his life. And he's been here for how many years, Tucker? He's been here for 22 years. And his life is a testimony to the grace of Almighty God. He didn't start it, but God intervened and God started it. And it's God that is going to finish it in your life. He began it. It was God that swept over my life. It was God that drew me to himself. I was just wanted to be a little punk hood. And God, (laughs) if you could have seen me when I was 16 years old, you wouldn't even talk to me. 
long hair, you know, bell bottoms, shoes with heels like that. If you put, if you put those shoes on, you would get a nosebleed. You were so high in the air. I had pink bell bottoms in a silk satin, whatever you call it, silk black shirt. And I thought I was the man. And other people thought I was from Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. <laughs> Angry, full of anger. Hated authority. And I found somehow, some way, through all kinds of crazy things that happened in my life, I was picked up and brought from New York and ended up living in a little town called Cowdersport, Pennsylvania. They had one red light. I went to high school there. I was in high school literally for a week and got into a fist fight, fist, fist fight with a teacher. I made history. It was the only time that a student ever got into a fist fight with a teacher. <laughs> I was wearing my stuff and doing my thing. You know, those guys were down. They were wearing baseball caps backwards, and they had little round things protruding out of their back pocket. pocket. I didn't know what that was. You know what that was? It was snuff. And they all wanted to go to uh, Future Farmers of America. <laughs> Not me, I wanted to go to Home Ec so I could be around the girls. <laughs> Smart man. But God plucked me up. God picked me up. And God brought me to a place of salvation. I went to a little country church. It was in the basement of the American Legion. And there I heard a message on the love of Almighty God. And the Spirit of the Lord got a hold of this angry 16-year-old kid that was bound for hell and bound for disaster. And God began to move over my life. And I surrendered my life that day before the Lord Jesus Christ. And I have been saved ever since. Come on and put your hands together and give God some praise. God got a hold of me. You're sitting here today because God started this thing in your life. I know you think you're cool and all that stuff. God brought you here. And if you have received him, you didn't find God. God found you. Some of you were literally hiding under a rock, and I just don't want to talk about the kind of rock that you were hiding about under. <laughs> he that had begun the work in you will complete it. Turn to somebody and tell them God's going to finish this thing. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Psalm chapter 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. With those two scriptures in mind, I want to tell you a story, or two stories, if I can get there, about two patriarchs in the Bible. One, his name was Jacob, and then Jacob had a son, and his name was Joseph. Jacob had many sons. He had 12 sons, and they eventually became the um, tribe of Israel. His name was transformed from Jacob to Israel. Jacob was a rascal. He was a deceiver. He stole his brother's birthright. He also uh, deceived his father-in-law and ended up taking about a third of all of the newborn lambs. He was a deceiver. He was a thief. He was a, a supplanter. 
He was a guy that you, 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 if you shook his hand and you had a ring on, when you got done shaking his hand, you wanted to make sure you still had your ring. He was a rascal. Jacob was, um, well, he, was, uh, he wasn't very honest. And several times in the Bible, it is recorded of the things that he did and how he deceived others. A anyone here, you don't have quite a perfect record? How many of you have a record? Made some mistakes, done some things that you shouldn't have done. Well, that describes Jacob. Jacob steals his brother's um, double portion. Jacob was uh, a twin. It was Jacob and Esau. Esau was born first, and the second to come out of his mother's womb was Jacob. So Jacob was the youngest. And Esau was to receive a double portion because he was the oldest, and he ended up deceiving his brother out of his double portion. It's, you can read it in, in the scriptures. And he stole from his brother. He went on and he stole from his uh, father-in-law. And somewhere in the middle of it all, although he has the blessing of his father, this double portion, for he gets his father from his father. Somewhere in the middle of it all, he has uh, 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 this dream, and it's the dream of, of Jacob's ladder. Does anybody know what that's about? Huh? He sees this ladder reaching from heaven to earth, okay? And on this ladder, now he has his experience, he has his encounter. On this ladder, he sees these angels that are going up to heaven, coming down from heaven and going up to heaven and coming down from heaven, going up down to heaven, I mean, back and forth and back and forth, and that, that, going to heaven, coming down, going to heaven, coming down. And he's watching them going up and down. So he has this experience. And so God had visited him in, in, in this vision that he saw. And so he had a godly experience. Are you with me? Jacob uh, had quite a family. He had uh, 12, he had two wives. He had 12 boys. They later on became the tribe of, uh, they became Israel, those 12 tribes. He had 10, 10 boys from one wife and she passed away. Then he remarried and he ended up having two more children. And we'll talk about his second, uh, his second group of children, or just one of them, actually, uh, Joseph. So Esau, his brother, is uh, traveling, and he's not too far away where, from where Jacob is. Jacob doesn't even realize he's there, and, and Esau doesn't realize that Jacob is there. And some of Jacob's servants come to him and say, your brother has 400 men, and he's coming to destroy you. He's angry with you. Well, come to find out, his brother really wasn't angry at all. But he thought his brother was going to get even with him for stealing his birthright. And so you know what he does? Jacob, this rascal, he takes his family and he divides it. He puts half of them over here and half of them over there. Instead of standing up and saying, I'm going, to stay, I'm going to stay with my kids and my grandkids and so forth and so on, he says, you go over there and you go over there, and this is what we're going to do. He said, maybe if, my, if Esau comes, maybe he'll just kill them. Now, we're talking about his children and his grandchildren maybe the, and his servants. Maybe the, he'll kill them, and these will get away. But he doesn't join either group. This guy's a rascal. Half of them are over here, half of them are over there, and he find, finds a place of solitude. And I think for the first time in his life, he realized that he needed God, that he wasn't the self-made man that he thought he was. And so he begins to pray. He begins to cry out to God. Have anybody ever here come to the realization that you're not all of that? 
You're not all that in a bag of chips. You're not that. He came to that point where he finally thought, I need God. I'm in trouble. My brother's going to kill me. My brother may kill my family. He might, and he's going to kill me. He's angry at me. And so he's crying out to God. And when he's crying out to God, he has another visitation. You know what it is? He ends up wrestling with an angel. Hmm. God sends an angel to visit with Jacob. And he starts wrestling with it because he's, he's contending for God to bless him. Anybody ever get desperate enough that you cry out to God and you're asking God to bless you? God, I know, I know I ain't done the right thing. And I know I've been a little bit of a rascal, but I'm in some real trouble here. And I need some help. He's crying out to God for help. And he's kind of, you know, uh, 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 asking the angel to, to bless him and for God to bless him and for God to protect him and keep him. Two things happen in that wrestling match. One thing that happens when he finally gets the realization that he needs God, his name is, is, his name is changed from Jacob to Israel. Jacob is a, is, is a deceiver. That's basically what Jacob means, deceiver. In this, in this wrestling with this angelic being, his name is changed to Israel, which means a prince with God. He goes from a rascal to a prince with God, and eventually he becomes a father. Out of his loins become the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. But something else happens. The angel's like, man, you got to let me go. Man, you got to let me go. He won't let him go. He's wrestling all night long. The sun begins to rise. And when the sun starts to rise, the angel says, look, it's almost, I don't know why. He says, it's almost daylight. You've got to let me go. And he says, no. You know what the angel does? Does anybody know? What's that? That's right. He struck him on his hip and he limped from that day forward. I didn't see that coming. I finally got it right. I finally realized that I needed God. I finally decided to go to church. I finally decided to turn on the radio and listen to some gospel music and throw all that stupid, crazy stuff away. I finally decided to put down the pipe and the bottle and this and that and stop chasing all those crazy women or chasing them stupid men. God, I want to do the right thing. And all of a sudden, you find yourself limping, hurt. Never seen that coming. How many of you here on this journey of faith have had some things come into your life and you're like, I don't know how that happened. Where did that come from? From that day on, he limped. Now, I have a million stories to tell you.
some things that have become disappointments in my life. Many times I've said to God, hey, God, where are you? And what's the matter for you? Anyone here ever say that? Have you ever <laughs> got so angry with God? It's like, God. But I've got some news for you. And here it is. He began this work in your life. And God is going to finish it. Even though you've been a rascal, and I know there are some people that would sit here and say, you know, you know, Jacob was really not a good guy. He was a bit of a rascal. Maybe that's something he deserved, you know, to limp the rest of his life. I, I don't know. That was uh, maybe uh, years ago I would have preached it, things that way, but I just can't preach things things that way anymore because I'm trusting in the mercy and the love of almighty God for humanity. Come on and put your hands together and give God some praise with me. And I know that his mercies are new every morning. And I know the God that I serve is a good God. And it was the goodness of God that led me to a place of repentance where I cried out to almighty God. It wasn't the anger of God or the chastening of God. It was the goodness of almighty God that I bowed my knee and said yes to the living Savior. Come on, give God praise with me. So I don't know, maybe you have that theology. Maybe that's your thing. Jacob deserved it. All right, you go argue with somebody else because I don't have an argument. All I can tell you is the God that I serve is a good God. Yeah. Hey, he deserved it. Okay, what well, okay. But in the encounter, his name is changed. God finished the work. What time is it? Huh? 11.03, and we're supposed to be out of here at 11.15, right? Okay. I haven't preached in a long time, so there's a lot of stuff in there, you know? I know that. I know. I know. Well, I love, I'd like to tell you the story of his son, Joseph, but I don't have the time. Joseph. <laughs> Let me just say this to you. Joseph was different than Jacob. Joseph was an upright man. He did almost everything perfect. He was hated, favored by his father, but hated by his brothers. And the father says to him, are you ready? We're going to go through this very quickly. The father says to him, your brothers are over there taking care of the sheep. There were 10 of them. They're taking care of the livestock. I want you to go visit them. It was a, a little bit of a way away from where the father lived. He said, go, Jacob said, go, go look after your brothers. He goes to look after his brothers. And his brothers hate him because you know what he has? He has this coat of many colors. The father favored him because he was a son of his old age. And so he favored him. He gets in this coat of many colors. And, and, and so he goes to visit his brothers. You know, his brothers say, here he comes. Here's our chance. They take him and they throw him in a pit to die. One of the brothers says, no, we can't leave him in there. They took his coat of many colors. They took an animal and they slayed it. They put blood on it, took it back to his father and said, he's dead. They hated him. They were jealous of him. One brother says, no, it takes him out of the pit. These people are traveling by. They, they sell him into slavery. He ends up in Egypt. And in Egypt, they sell him to a, a, a man named Potiphar. And uh, Potiphar's wife 
Uh, he worked for Potiphar for 13 years. Potiphar's, Potiphar's wife, she thought he was good looking. Yeah, this is a true story. She thought, ooh, he's good looking. And so she comes on to him. She does. She wants to be intimate with him. Are, are you with me? And he says, no, I can't do that. You know, he's a faithful man. Her husband comes home, Potiphar. She had grabbed his cloak off of him. When he comes home, because he wouldn't lay with her, she takes it and she said, look, he tried to rape me. He ends up in prison. Wait a minute. My father sends me out to do something. My brothers take me, put me in a pit. Then they sell me into slavery. Then I get sold to the house of Potiphar. He's faithful in the house of Potiphar. He's a good man. He's an upright man. He's never done anything wrong. Nothing like his father. And now he ends up in prison. I didn't see that coming. Wait a minute, man. I've been in church my whole life. He that has begun a work and you will finish it. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You might be perfect. Now, I mean, you might be just perfect. Like you've never done anything wrong. You've always had a heart for God. You're, you read your Bible. You're kind. You're nice. You never lose your temper. Whatever, 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 whatever. It, if that's the truth, uh, who you are after church, can you please counsel me? <laughs> but even the righteous at times have things that come into their life. So whether you're Jacob or you're Joseph, I'm here to tell you the thing God started in your life, he's going to finish it. The end of Joseph's life story is tremendous. If you wrote a, mo a movie about, his, about it, it would be from the pit to the palace. God exalted him and God finished the work in his life. God is going to finish but he started in your life. Don't give up. Don't get angry. Don't get frustrated. Don't walk away from this faith. Hallelujah. That has begun. Don't leave this journey behind. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. And you're going to find out that the perfect will of God is going to be done in your life. And you're going to be blessed and you're going to be prosper. And tomorrow is going to be better than yesterday. Come on and put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. I pray for each and every one that might be carrying the load of disappointment. Maybe things that people and others have said about them and done. Things, Father God, they're just uh, been out of their control. Started the journey only to find great disappointment. But Father, I'm asking you that you will encourage your children today, that they will feel, Father God, a knowing that you do all things well and in the end we are going to win and you are moving around the chess pieces and we are going to win this game and in the end we're going to say we have a good good daddy and he does all things well you're going to bless them you're going to take care of them you're going to watch over them and father god you're going to cause them to prosper and father god we just i'm asking that each and every one of us our hearts will be gripped with this very thing that our tomorrows are going to be better than yesterday 
Say that with me. My tomorrows are going to be better than yesterday. I, we need to get a vision for our lives that in the end, we are going to win in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Get out of here. Love you.